A lot of what I've been talking about is in my book, Breakthrough Advertising. In the book, I go over much more, the specifics on how to write. I find as a personal phenomenon, advertising to be an extremely easy discipline. It can be very hard if you work at it too hard. It can be very easy if you flow along with it. What are you doing when you market something? You are not creating demand for a product. If you think that you are creating demand for your product, you've doomed yourself to a lifetime of hard work and failure. You can't create demand for anything because demand is too large for you to create. The demand has to be out there. The demand has to exist before you even walk into the picture. Think of yourself as an atomic scientist. You find a tiny thing called the atom, which has enormous, enormous, enormous stored up, locked in power. And you find that if you take two atoms and bind them together, you can release the power. That's what you're doing. You've got a market out there that wants security in retirement. You've got a market out there that wants alternative healing outside of the pain and embarrassment inflicted upon them by the medical profession. But they want the authority of a doctor. What you are doing is you are taking that demand from every one of those persons, focusing it or channeling it into your product. That's all. It's so much easier. If the demand isn't there, no matter how great a copywriter you are, you are going to fail. You cannot create demand. You can only channel demand. Demand is there. Demand is enormous. The bigger the demand, the better your ad is. You are getting in a boat and letting the stream carry you. Just don't think that you can paddle up against the stream. Copywriting, of course, is an associative process. The list becomes an associative stimulus list. And as you go down through the list, you'll get ideas. Okay, you hit the end of bar twice. That gives you a space, and you write it in. Now, you may want to disassociate your own ideas from the quotes, so you can put your ideas in bold, underline, italics, anything else. The more disassociative ideas you get, the more chance you have of getting a stronger ad. But you will find that authors are not writing copy. They are writing text. Their vocabulary is different, and their entire conception of what it means to write is different. So you come up with a paragraph about uh, half a page long, a real big paragraph. And you'll see this great idea in there. So make it bold and write a headline. That's a wonderful way to do it. Write a 10-word headline. That makes you condense the thought and makes you search for advertising terminology to parallel the thought. When you get through doing that, don't read what you've just written. It's not worth reading. You just keep going. Now, what you want to do is get yourself into a creative frenzy, like a feeding frenzy. You want to get the ideas flowing so thoroughly that pretty soon you're not condensing what he or she has written. But pretty soon you are coming up with an entirely new concept that will apply. Here's an example. You remember Gecko in Wall Street? Let's say that he's kind of burnt in your memory and you're selling an investment letter and you remember something he said at the trial on the stock market and all of a sudden that idea is floating there that image get go and here is the investment letter you're working on and as you're doing this pulling and condensing headlines out of the text you're given all of a sudden you get something from that and Gecko suddenly joins. It fuses, like an atomic reaction in your mind. And you have a powerful line to sell your product. Then, when you're
you're through with everything, go away for a day and come back. Then you judge. Always remember, incidentally, that you cannot judge. I've been doing copy now for 35 years. I've sold millions and millions and millions of things. What does my experience allow me to say about the power of an ad? What does your experience allow you to say about the power of an ad before it's run? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. You must remember that. You don't know anything about how an ad is going to pull. The only way you can tell is get a test cell. I don't believe in focus groups or anything else. I think they're wonderful, but they don't give you an indication. Sometimes the things that they think you should throw away are the things that really go. Only the test can decide. All the previous experience in the world tells you nothing because you are introducing something absolutely new. And that leads to the next thing, which is go for the touchdown pass in football. If you are behind by six points and you have 30 seconds and you're on your own 20, but that means you have to go 80 yards, and they've got everybody except the coach facing you on the line, what you do is fall back. The quarterback falls back. He sends out the ends and everybody else as fast as they can, and he throws a 60-yard pass. If you catch it, you win. If it drops, you lose. When you're in that situation, go for the touchdown pass. The only way to be a good copywriter is to get great results. To think of yourself as going for the breakthrough. And nobody can tell its power until the orders come in. Always think statistically. You do not work with words. Think in terms of percentage points. That's what you should do. I specialize in ugly. I'm the lousiest layout man in the world. I do ugly layouts. Why do I do ugly layouts? Because beauty looks much the same. It has a very narrow definition. Ugliness is randomness, which means that it is spread out. So there are a hundred different ways to be ugly and only two or three ways to be beautiful. So, the ugly thing in the world of beauty stands out. Estee Lauder discovered that. Twenty years ago, when Revlon was just knocking them dead with this four-color printing and then everybody else came in, Alina Rubinstein, et cetera, et cetera, Estee herself said, well, if we run four-color, we're going to look like everybody else. Nobody's going to be able to tell us. How about Sapia? And she got a series of Sapia ads that were stunningly beautiful but completely different. And when you open the magazines there, wham, there is Lauder. You can get 20, 30 percent extra pull. Take your product. Let's say it's got some pictures in it and graphs. Maybe just plain type. It's eight pages. That's your physical part. That's all there is. Nobody in the world is going to buy that, though. Nobody in the world cares about that. Now, let's push that physical product aside, and let's get into the functional product. The functional product is what the physical product does for you. You've got a product there that does a certain number of things for you. Never think of what the product is. A horse is an animal with four legs. It doesn't do anything for you. Think of what the product does. When you define something with a dozy, it becomes a functional definition instead of an academic definition. A dog that runs up and licks your face when you come home every night. Your functional product, your dozy product, has immense number of dozes. You have been tapping one specific strain of those dozes, and that's been successful for you. But you have pretty well exhausted that strain of dozes. You have to 
go into the other does's. And that gives you an entire new mailing piece which may reach the same audience but from a different direction. In my book, Breakthrough Advertising, I give 27 different ways that you can dozzy a product. Let's take one of them right now. We ran an ad for flowers 20 years ago that sold so many flowers we exhausted nurseries. And what it said was, who ever heard of 17,000 blooms from a single plant? We said, when you put this into the earth and you jump back, it explodes in flowers. And everybody in your neighborhood comes and they look. And people take home blooms because you've got so many, you could never find a house big enough to put them in. And you become the gardening expert for the entire neighborhood. Multi-blossom plants have been selling fairly well before, but we brought the audience into copy as actors within it. So, yet another does. There are all kinds of doeses. Just redo your product. Let's go back to my little Chang piece. The Chang piece sells a book. Now, you can't prove the book until you get the book. Ergo, there is no instant benefit. Well, that's not true. I took an exercise from the book and I said, this is the way you, the reader, prove the book. Practice it a second. Remember, your selling piece is always part of your product, disconnected from the product and sent out advance of the product. It is the functional product that it includes, not the physical. In each issue of Retirement Letter, you've been giving instant gratification. You've been telling people that these are the three top bank stocks. There are the three top insurance stocks. This is the way to buy annuities, something XYZ annuity fund. That is instant gratification. You have two powers in your present format. Number one, you have something that I call camouflage, which means the first time a person picks up your Magalog, they think this is a magazine that power being diluted at this time. The second is this incredible power of demonstration. Demonstration is a form of proof which takes place at the present moment. The person picks it up. He looks at it. I'm talking about your pieces now and he says, yes, I can prove this. You are giving instant gratification just as you have been giving instant gratification for years. You have this incredible, strong, proven product. It has all kinds of unique advantages nobody else has. It's been around 20 years. It's never had a losing year. You've got 200,000 people who subscribe to it more than anyone else in the world. The man has an extremely powerful credential list. All that is there. But then, it's dealing with an incredibly sensitive subject, retirement, and the fear of being a failure at retirement. That's the worst fear any older person has. And what I tried to do, and I'm not sure I could do it, or I'm not sure you have accepted it, or I'm not sure it will pay off, is I try to make your benefits absolutely, instantly accessible in ways that you have not made them before by inventing a series of forms for you that the person simply sends in. And then I can give an extremely threatening headline and put in an extremely great promise as a cure at the same time. Almost anything that we do as publishers can be made instantaneous. And people believe them. They are extremely powerful because nothing feels better than being proved right. And if you give them something that they can prove, they will really love it. That's what I'm trying to do. I think everything is instantaneous. Copy.
copywriters should be completely conversant with statistics and returns. The worst thing you can do to your copywriters is to separate them from the returns of every list and every test and every cell. Copywriters who write copy for the sake of copy and words alone are doomed to failure. If you keep your copywriters away from the results and the comparative results on every single test, they are not going to do very much for you. Boardroom sends me thick packages of results, and I will spend three or four or five hours going over the results in detail for them. I think of myself as a person who creates a 20% difference in returns, and I like decimal points. You've got to get those results. You can't know something from the outside. You have to know it inside. All mail order is dependent upon the second sale. Nobody really makes money on the first sale. You can, but it's an awfully strange way to run a company. If you get too much profit on your initial mailing, you immediately expand it to lists, which are not doing quite as well, so that you can get more names and sales. When we sell books, we would very much love to have the people absolutely delighted with the book, because with the book comes a brochure advertising the next book. So our second sale is there, and we mail them every month. So our carrier is much like your carrier. Your newsletter is a carrier with further advertisements. That is so for us, too. Think of television. In 1949, our agency bought time in that new medium called television on ABC, on a half-hour program. We didn't know how to fill it, so we wrote a program a day. How do you write a program a day? The only way you can write a program a day is to take the product and translate it into the program. There was a program called The Answer Man which was a regular program. The people sent in questions, he answered them. So we decided, let's take the product, a piano course, and let's ask questions about the product for the entire 30 minutes, and then sell the product in the one minute middle. And so we said, can my kid play? Can a five-year-old kid play? Can a five-year-old kid without arms play? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we turned out one program a day, all talking about piano courses. Well, we didn't know it, but we invented the infomercial. Okay. We sold so many darn piano courses. And why did it work? Because we were demonstrating the product on the air. Television infomercials really sell, but they also demonstrate. Everybody should get a copy of the Slicer commercial. The Slicer commercial is a demonstration. That is the product. And what is coming across the mail in your package is not the physical product, but the functional product. Demonstrations are sending the products to the person. It's very discouraging to work something that pulls within 4 or 5 percent of another offer then something's wrong. You're not taking enough of a chance. If you are running tests which are giving you small improvements, and if you are not running enough tests that are really flopping, then you are not doing your job. Copywriters are crazy, and you want them crazy. They go for the big kill. And I would rather flop badly and succeed greatly than I would coming in with that little 5% boost. A very good copywriter is going to fail. If the guy doesn't fail, he's no good. He's got to fail. It hurts. But it's the only way to get the home runs the next time. If you use what I tell you here today and study my book, Breakthrough Advertising, like I study a book from Rodale or any other project for that matter, you can write Breakthrough Advertising too. Good night 
and thank you for having me. Here is another bonus resource for you. And it's about a section on my site that has about 15 hours of audio interviews with copywriting experts, including Brian Keith Voiles, including Carl Galletti, including Eugene Schwartz. You will not find this content anywhere. It'll take you to an entire collection of audio recordings, MP3 downloads, and transcripts of some of my best interviews on the subject of copywriting. You'll be able to play them, download them, print the transcripts, and it's a collection you will not find anywhere else. If you want an education on copywriting, you will not find anything better than this.